here we are back in the world of Alexander. Um, this is crossing the Jaxartes. What's happened is uh, after Gagamela, the Persian Empire more or less sort of falls apart, at least in the West. <coughs> and Alexander's moving about, grabbing up you know, and consolidating things. And the Scythians up to the north, and if you remember, we had a few Scythians in Gagamela, are uh, kind of blowing hot and cold, b promising allegiance or at least friendship. Uh, but then they see a weakness, and it looks like they're ready to attack, and Alexander decides to nip it in the bud. So he crosses the Granicus again now. In this case, it's the Chixartes, which is apparently a bigger river. Uh, it doesn't use the normal river crossing rules. Instead, there's Ford hexes from here to here. Those have special rules uh, regarding them. It costs a unit all its movement to enter a Ford. You're not allowed to stack in a river hex. Yeah, well. Uh, a unit in a river hex cannot shock attack into a non-river hex. Now imagine that in some of the other scenarios. That it makes the river, you know, uncrossable. But in Alexander's, uh, to his benefit, the Scythians aren't allowed to deploy right along the river. I.e., the scenario is winnable. Um, it costs all your movement point allowance to leave the river, and the unit takes two cohesion hits for the phalanx units they have to do this for each half of their unit spend the whole movement in the river but they only take two cohesion hits total for it okay missile hits taken while you're in the river are doubled you are allowed to uh, do missile combat I don't remember if I mentioned that you're allowed to do missile combat but you have a penalty of two against you if you route while you're in the river, you're just eliminated. And the Scythians aren't allowed to enter the river, but they are allowed to shock attack into the river without having without uh, any advance after. Um, that way's north. Unlike that. We should have a compass rose like we do in naval games. Uh, all right. So the Scythians have a few goals here. One, they could route the Macedonians. Um, two, they could clear the Macedonians um, and make sure that there are none north of the Chixartes at the conclusion of the fourth game turn. Halt the uh, crossing, basically, which sounds pr pretty much their best option. That's only checked on turn four. And then the final one is they have to avoid getting routed. Which, gosh, uh, I guess the Cav can hunt them down. So, the two armies, the Scythians are pretty simple. They've got some Lancers, which are, and, and deployment's free in this, uh, within limits, but... <coughs> uh, the Scythians, otherwise I'd be on the river. The Scythians have a few Lancers, but mostly it's light Cav. Archer armed, obviously. A bunch of leaders, not too bad, not great. But, uh, for the Macedonians, we have a whole mix of things. First of all, we have these Oxybartes or whatever, uh, basically the ballistae, which, uh, Oxybellies, uh, which are positioned, you know, at, at the beginning I've got them positioned to help defend the near the crossings. They have like a seven hex maximum range, a couple of shots. They have a lot of freedom in terms of how they operate. Uh, we looked at them before, I guess I could briefly say, but I, I kind of covered most of it. Um, they can kind of shoot, chime in and shoot whenever they like, but they get only two shots uh, per phase. Now, I don't know what the hell. I had this, they've got this very specific not turn Okay, well, as far as the, that seems to me, I think they mean per orders phase. Uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't really make sense because there's the leader's activation phase 
and the orders phase, which are kind of intermingled. If they mean, if they really mean per phase in the sense of each per, yeah, but see, an orders phase is not one liter, right? The liter activation phase and the orders phase are the game. <laughs> and it seems like there's one of each of these per turn. So I don't know if you're supposed to be able to fire also in like, I don't know, and momentum phase. <sighs> I'm getting the feeling that, that, that the way the rules are written, these things are just they're going to devastate anything because they can shoot at whatever they like. They don't have to shoot at the moving unit. They can fire twice during a single phase, not turn. The units can fire at any time during the phase, even in the midst of enemy units. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to get anywhere near them if that's the case, in which case, you know, you're not going to be able to get rid of the Macedonians by turn four. Uh, it, just because they can blast whatever is near them. I mean, every, every time you activate a leader, you, it, but it doesn't say like per activation, but activation doesn't exactly exist. The problem is that things aren't really well defined, at least in my mind, in the rules. Uh, so, for example, is phase defined? Because, I mean, we have ridiculous number of phases here, right? There's a shock combat. I saw something else. Let's see. No, that's a segment. So, I mean, we have the leader activation phase, which is the moment at which you choose to activate a leader, I guess. So at that point, each one gets two shots. According, according if you read the rules strictly, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Then you have the orders phase, when the units actually move. Then the momentum phase, and then, <laughs> What's outside of all of that is the route and recovery phase and the withdrawal phase. I think what they mean is each activation, essentially. Um, do they mean including momentums? Again, not clear, and, and that's the real problem. Phase is not a defined term. The only way it's defined is within here, and wow, there are a whole bunch of them, you know? <laughs> In, in the game turn. So, I mean, you'd be looking at like 20, 20 to 30 shots each, uh, I guess. Let's see, how many? So, interpreting it as rigorously, or as rigidly and most limited fashion that I can with that phase not turn statement, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry. We have one, two, three, four, five, six liters. Okay, so that means it's going to be able to fire 12 times. Minimum, minimum interpretation of the rule. If you take it a little worse, well, obviously, you know, we're not going to say the activation choice is a phase for firing, but the orders and momentums might be, which means you could double or triple that number uh, if you get momentums. What does it affect, you know, if Die Roll of Doom comes in or something like that, though? And that, that's where I feel like the momentum kind of has to count. Because otherwise we're getting to something really uh, undefined. Now, let's go back to the Oxypelics. Maybe this has gotten rewritten. I should look online and see if they've improved the rules for this.
See, for example, here it says oxybalis may either move or fire. They cannot do both in the same phase. To be moved, they must be given an individual order. Again, that would make a lot of sense in, on a per turn basis, as does the firing ratio, because that's something that's based on the actual kind of concept of time. And when games start fucking with my concept of time, I really don't like it because these things start becoming, you know, they start turning into metaphysical paradoxes. <laughs> so, I think I've always played it as per turn, which is what I'm so specifically told not to do. I'm gonna try to see if there's anything online about that. Anyway, uh, I don't know where the hell I was. I'm talking about their units. Um, I've decided to put the Hippaptists and the Companion Cav up front. I want to get those big heavy things in across the river because they're the most likely to do me some good. The worry is if they route um, pinned against the river, I guess they just die. I mean, I, I, they're not gonna they're not gonna start, you know grabbing wineskins, inflated wineskins and rafts and stuff, which is apparently what was used, um, and be able to cross effectively. This seems like a nasty river. Then uh, behind that, I've got a clump of skirmishers and a clump of light cab, each of which has a contingent commander. Those do, you know, I want to get them across as fast as possible, but they're not as steadfast as the other units. And especially the skirmishers, well, both of them can fire missiles if the crossing is too contested by that point. So because the crossing is open to begin with, I'm getting my best units across. It, with the exception of I'm holding the phalanxes back because it's pretty clear with some momentum the Scythians can get right up there, although I don't know that they'd want to if these Oxybarti or Oxybellies are uh, blasting them away, you know, with... We're looking probably at ranges three and four, you know, about a 50% chance of doing a hit with each of those shots. So each one's gonna do about six hits in the course of a turn minimum and do, 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 that's you know I'm, I'm gonna be routing four units or something <laughs> a turn just with the artillery i i don't know i don't know if they should be that potent um but it sounds it sounds way more than i'd expect but if they are that potent the last time i played with them uh the battle should not have been there, I, I remember that the Macedonians were kind of pressed against them. And I tried to stay away from them, even as they were, because they're kind of potent art, artillery pieces. But, you know, on the other hand, if it's per turn, it, it seems pretty weak. If they're only doing a couple of hits per turn there. So, I don't know. So some people have tried to hash out meaning from this. And I think what has come about with what looks like a some somebody whose name was quoted but isn't you know mark herman or berg and maybe someone having to do with this but not anyone i've heard of as reported by someone else uh <laughs> has um <clears throat> because I guess they're unwilling to visit BGG, but you know, who knows how important, how, how relevant they are to anything, uh, has suggested that there's, some, there's a couple of things to remember here, which is that the firing has to be kind of triggered. So enemy moving units can be shot at. It doesn't, it's not normal reaction fire, but it still apparently has to be triggered according to them. Uh, so you can't just shoot at stuff that's not doing anything at all. Which I'm not sure makes sense. I mean, except that that's trying to uh, handle the time issue here. 
uh, you know, if I park some Scythians here, they're not a constant target, but they are a target anytime that I can activate them. So if, a, if I'm activating a leader and they don't take any orders, but they have to be in command, which I think means as long as I'm in command range of the leader that I just activated, I can fire them without expending any orders. So that gives them significantly less shots. And I think it comes out to about the right number. And the per phase, the issue there is you can only fire when archers would be able to fire, which is when there's, I see the problem is normal archers aren't able to fire at random during other people's turns, but when some archers are able to fire or something. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's really intended to be that way, but the way this is spelled out, I'm willing to take it, which is to say they can fire at any time during the phase, and we mean any. They may fire even in the midst of enemy movement. Well, the even in the midst of enemy movement is kind of weird because that kind of seems to imply that they would normally be able to fire not in the midst of enemy movement, which means why do you have to wait until something triggers that fire? But I do like the idea of limiting it a little bit by the timing. It still should be sufficient to kind of really scare the Scythians. And I mean, these were potent, potent tools. They could punch right through armor or whatever, horses, maybe multiple men. And apparently in this particular battle, they had a, a significant psychological effect. And Alexander begins, uses an elite initiative to begin pushing some of his troops into the water. Now, I didn't put the uh, companion cav in, I just put the Baptists in. And for whatever reason, moved the skirmishers up. I don't really know why, except for the one per turn type of thing. It would have been hard to move all those skirmishers with another leader. I kind of want to get them across. Oops. Oh well. Uh, you can see the Scythians have moved forward, leaving most of their leaders behind. Uh, they weren't really looking at trying to push to cover uh, the river, but they're actually within archery range of these suckers. We had a little bit of fire that was successful. I've got like one hit over here. Otherwise, uh, either forgetting to roll or... <laughs> luck prevent, uh, prevented any hits. But the main factor of this being the river and the artillery supporting it. I think this is going to be over pretty quickly because this isn't a very big battle. The Scythians of course coming across trying to... Uh, I have to start recording the turn so... because there's a turn record track as there is in uh, some of the other games but unfortunately they put it on the charts and tables where it's absolutely useless. It's not really that big a deal. <laughs> I know Hoplite has one on kind of a, a place where you keep casualties or something like that. Kind of thing. I'm sure the deluxe treatment, the newest deluxe treatment, this is a deluxe, but the newest one includes more and has those silky counters. Um, I'm sure that has a different kind of tur uh, turn record track. But, you know, honestly, I don't really need it. it I gotta keep track of shit on paper anyway. Uh, although, probably the new deluxe one has like little record tracks to keep track of how many route points you've accumulated. Anyway, I think this is gonna be pretty short just because you got the Macedonians coming forward. They're gonna start chewing up uh, the Scythians if the Scythians try to interfere too much. We've got some damage already accruing. Most of it happening on the Macedonian phases. Uh, and. You know, beyond that, I mean, you know, the choices are hang back and let the Macedonians across and slaughter you, or come up and let the artillery slaughter you and hope you can kind of damage the not very fatigued. These were all threes, but Alexander did uh, recovery operations on them. Um, so they're not, not in that bad of shape. So I've got the companions and the Baptists across, and now I've got a bunch of skirmishers and some light cav even beginning to make their way across. I just don't really see much hope for the Scythians here, but we'll see if they get lucky. Ander flings the companions forward, and you can see they broke part of the Scythian line. Elsewhere, uh, skirmishers filling in where that is. They're, they're kind of in danger. Because with the river behind them, they don't have an easy way to fall back. And, but I wanted to get more units across. I probably shouldn't have 
moved the skirmishers across this quickly if I understood the scenario better. I would probably have pulled the light cav, cav in before. Um, and now that hands things over to an initiative for the Scythians. And again, like normal, I have the option to kind of try to trump in with Alexander and strip a lot of their momentum because they're going to have trouble way back here. Now they can run up and activate a few units. The other thing is the question of what to do with the Scythians. Uh, obviously, if I can kind of clean out some of these companions, I, I need to do that. But outside of that, it may be that the hit and run tactics are my best move. Just degrade the Macedonians a little further. Harassment fire is really, really annoying on the defender. I mean, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but they're just picking this guy off. Activation after activation, because it doesn't flip them over as far as I can tell. That's how I play it. Uh, but on top of that kind of whatever is going on there, and I'm only allowing the, uh, the ballista to fire... Oh, the Roman ballista, or wow, well, they, they use different terms for different things, but these are essentially what I'd call ballista. Um, I'm only, uh, what am I saying? I'm only allowing them to fire on the uh, harassment and dispersal way back here because they never actually move. Whether or not that's legitimate, you know, with this scenario, I've had to make a bunch of decisions. Hey, does this make sense? Does this make sense? For example, you know, if uh, this routed unit, it can't just route along the river. It's got to try to cross it and die because it won't be allowed to, which may or may not be the reasonable salute, the reasonable answer, but I don't know what it should be. Anyway, uh, these Lancers formed up into a charge formation and broke that thing. But over here, we got one shot here. We did some, some harassment back here. Uh, this guy actually did a drive-by shooting, kind of a la the chariots. And again, the horse archers can do the same kind of thing that the chariots can. They're just, uh, I guess, they're just as effective, really. The firepower rating is always on that top. And I find this a little weird, uh, because chariots would seem to be a better platform, as would elephants, but they use the the mounted, uh, the regular mounted as if they're on horses, which probably isn't 100% correct, but I, I don't know. I mean, a chariot's a pretty bumpy ride, right? And the horse archers are, at least the Mongol ones, are pretty well trained, and you'd, these are some predecessor, but without stirrups and, you know. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the Scythian leaders, except for the main commander. No, oh, Alexander tried to trump in and failed. That's part of what went wrong here. I was going to cut their turns down. I figured I'd, you know, only get one activation off my one leader, but it was worth doing it. Yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, but this guy's going to come up and try to rally some of those units, because I can't really afford to lose them. They're, the... the uh, the route numbers in this game are not high at all. This does a good job with Cav and even more impressive, the skirmishers chasing away the Scythians. Over here, I was also able to recover this unit. It's not that bad now. Um, these are actually out of range at this point. The uh, the loss of Alexander's commands, you know, probably two rounds now. I got two momentums here, but. Uh, the loss of Alexander's rounds mean that the, there's not as much of the Macedonians across the table, uh, across the river as you'd expect, but I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job with them anyhow. Uh, Point-wise, well, the Macedonians lost one of their companions, but the Scythians are at 17. They really can't press the attack anymore, and now it becomes a, can we run around and hide for four turns? And that's a long time, but it may mean that people are like whipping their horses and you know taking multiple activations to try to catch or run away. But there's not a whole hell of a lot of board here. This isn't you know, and those units are very fast. They ran from here to the edge of the board, but there's a couple of corners. The only thing is, it's really really tough to. Uh, 
to run away in that kind of quantity and hide for, well, it's only two more turns that I'd have to hide. Maybe it's time to break off and see what, what can happen. At the very least, things like the skirmishers and the hippaptists aren't going to be my problem. All I have to worry about is the cav. The light cav's still in the river. The companions aren't in the best of shape. Might be able to play out and avoid taking 23 more hits. Massive incompetence shows through again. I use Alexander, continue pushing some stuff forward. One of the things I noticed was my hippaptists were blocking some of my units. Great. Okay, so I move them forward and scare away some of the cav and actually kill, uh, hit some of it, routing it. I don't know which ones are which anymore at this point. But you don't want to send infantry marching into cav in that way. Uh, as I find out, the cav generally can turn and affect it, but I was afraid of route checks, even though high quality units, whatever. Um, and my infantry ended up getting caught in some nasty attacks. One routed unit got chased down, another one was surrounded and hit, one is there. So I lost two of my hippaptus, that gets me up to a 25 route number. And it's looking, you know, like a w potentially winnable game for, uh, the Scythians, and that's all because this butthead over here got three full actions. And there were enough units in the way that the firepower wasn't able to... This uh, particular bullet, uh, artillery piece has been almost ineffectual because it's been blocked constantly. Uh, but this one's been firing pretty often. These guys were firing fairly often as well. I may end up moving them. You know, what's weird with the movement and fire? So... Let's see how this is done. They may either move or fire. They cannot do the same in the same phase. Again, that's per phase, not per, per turn. So, I can move them, and that's all great and fine. And then they can fire just fine on other phases, so they seem to be very quick to set up and dismantle <laughs> when you consider, you know, uh, that in the amount of time you can basically launch, that they can move and fire again, you can basically launch a cavalry attack twice. I don't know. <laughs> I've been having trouble getting into this. I mean, anything except XX, I've been having trouble. I've got something I should be really excited about that I'm working on the rules for uh, on to Paris. And, oh boy. Uh, anyway, with this, we triggered a cav charge. A bunch of lancers came forward. One of them chased away some skirmishers. The other smashed into some light cav. Killed a routed unit over here with some light cav. Got a momentum. And I trumped in to prevent the bleeding, but it's too late. I mean, I'm basically one, well, probably two units, unless a companion goes, away from the Macedonians routing here. <laughs> uh, is there anything the archers could have done that I'm not counting? Uh, I think I have a shot there after he... Hit that I didn't account for. Let's have one, two, three, four, five. So those would have been twos. I got one more hit on that. But otherwise, yeah, um, the Scythians are just whacking. And I, I think the Scythians are the ones who use the rhomboid, so I should have these turned over. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're just slaughtering the Macedonians coming across. And I'm not quite sure, uh, I may have made a, a minor mistake, but a minor mistake in terms of what you bring over first or whatever. And, and that's kind of the puzzle of this scenario. Mm, could well be the whole game. And also having this guy constantly screened. If I had him out here or something, he could be plinking things off on the edges. I didn't realize how much trouble those would be. Uh, while trying to cross the river. Macedonians push back as hard as they can, and they do manage to kill a couple of the Scythians, but they lose 
another unit. Now they're one point away from breaking. Uh, Scythians are up to 29. But these guys are all going off the map. If nothing's done. And that's uh, 17 more, which puts them up to... That puts them past breaking. So the Scythians have to be kind of careful here. And Alexander's still available. Which means if I can get him you know, into range where he can command these, they could actually do enough damage to win this. So it's a, it's a close fought thing. I don't think the scenario is meant to be this close. I have the feeling that as you figure out the Macedonian puzzle, you know, it becomes much, much easier to deal with. But I also don't think that it's trivial. You know, it's a string of bad luck. You don't have to... I don't think you have to place and, and, and do as poorly as I've done with the crossing in order to lose. It's just much easier for the Scythians uh, to understand what's going on without thinking too hard about it. I'm not really in the mood to think. And the remaining Scythian activities resulted in some more mopping up of some of the Macedonians who made it over, and some rally attempts, partially successful. Uh, Point-wise, what's important here is we managed to hit this guy and kill him. And he's just one of the contingent commanders. What's kind of weird about them is that they add to the total tactical quality you could lose out of an army, which is not really... They're not accounted for in the points, I assume. Uh, and I'm not sure if leaders are ever really accounted, though. But the loss of leaders is a huge loss. So that thing was worth 15 points. So that drives it up to 82 to 34. I mean, it's over. Alexander gets two activations, but he doesn't have a lot across the river and really can't do much. I could probably just call this at this point. It's such a... You know, it's a puny little scenario, and I've lost it by so much. <laughs> There's not a lot of interest going on, but then again, it's also not much longer, so I guess I'll finish it up. In Alexander's turn, the humiliation continues with a rare routing on a rally attempt of an eight morale or quality uh, companion unit, just to add insult to injury. It's going to put us uh, 35 points over the limit. Scythians are, well, 40 Five, so they're five points over, but this guy's going off the map. Forgot to get him, so that makes it 11 points over. But again, not uh, not even close. And, you know, um, I'm seeing some things that I would have rather done in terms of my initial crossing, but it's not a trivial scenario. It's a, probably balanced in favor of the Macedonians. Uh, I can't say for sure, but... Uh, Certainly the Scythians have an easier task in terms of, you know, they, I don't think they have to figure out anything too clever here. Um, if the Macedonians make a mistake or get some bad luck, you can do what I did to them. If they don't, I don't think that running away or any, any kind of weird actions like that are going to save you. I think you're going to... Uh, have problems and this is uh three of the four turns anyway so but both armies are breaking uh, and the macedonians have definitely suffered a significant defeat here with the particular units and whatever that they lost if it hadn't been for that 15 points we'd be uh, down at 75 which would mean we'd be 20 points over these guys are still you know only 11 so the leader was not some <laughs> I've had so, a, a fair number of these games go because uh, a leader or two dies, and they're just such a huge quantity of points. I know when I played Hoplite at uh, Consent World, I had two of my leaders die, and it was just, I was winning the battle, and then boom, boom, you know, <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, and that's kind of taught me this never ever ever risk a leader i don't care what's going on it's not worth it um, it degrades your command capabilities and it makes you uh it, it puts something way too many points at risk i mean the one exception is if you're losing the game badly and you just want every little edge you can throw in yeah 
but never risk your leaders, which is so anti this heroic era. You know, Alexander was so badly wounded so many times. His, his subordinates were most of those he opposed. Well, the Persians were a little weird at times, but certainly the Scythians would throw their, their leaders in, I'd expect. You know, um, this is, it's kind of funny because uh, the, uh, the game was designed for the Alexander period uh, initially, and then it got extended to Rome. And sure, there are tons and tons of Roman boxed games for it now, but that kind of not throwing yourself into the front line makes sense in the Roman era and maybe in the successors era. It does not make any sense for Alexander and for his subordinates, none whatsoever. And yeah, you know, that just, I, I don't mind that, like, I don't mind the victory point penalty for like losing Alexander. I do kind of mind it for losing other leaders. And most of all, I mind the amount to which command is dependent on leaders not being engaged in combat. I understand the argument for it. I'm not sure it actually applies. <laughs> I really don't know that it applies. Anyway, because, you know, Alexander would engage and his forces that were near him would still do things. They wouldn't just stand there and twiddle their thumbs. All right, let's send this one up.